Uh, it's got the soap and the spot free rinse. The owner's manual is here. And then you're going to find another little bag of stuff. That's mostly mounting hardware. This is what we're looking for. And this little jewel here goes in this basket like this. Okay. And then you'll take... You have that tonight. I don't want to show you what we're talking about mm -hmm. here. See so this little soap peel, what do you ever call it? You put it here, and that's the soap. And then over here, you'll put your spot-free rinse in this little dispenser. And let's see, let me turn that light back on. Okay, you can see that there's a light there. That tells me it needs more soap, so I would put it till the light goes out or till it's full, put this back on there, and that light won't be showing anymore. After that, you can choose your cycles here, all the way from a heavy load to just a, like a quick rinse, which is about 11 minutes. Or eco. Uh, eco is, I believe it's non-heated drying, so we've chosen our cycle. Next thing we'll do is we'll turn it uh, to start, and what happens is it'll lock the door, so you can't open it no more, and it'll, it'll start washing. Let's say you forgot a dish. You can pause it by hitting the same button here and it'll unlock the door. You gotta give it about three seconds. To mechanically unlock the door. And then you'll put your dish that you forgot in here. And then you'll close the door back and then you can just resume where you left off. Okay. Uh, yep. It goes through the whole load. Locking. Locking. Uh, For travel. There's two forms <laughs> of locking on this unit. If you just wanna lock the keypad here so like kids or somebody's not messing with your stuff, You'll press and hold this button on the right for three seconds and you hear a beep. Another three seconds and it'll lock the door. And that's what we use for travel. That way the door's locked and it won't open up and accidentally bang and put a dent in the door. Uh, explain how when you plug in it unlocks itself. Oh yeah, if you plug into shore power now or unplug and travel and when you get back to where you're going and plug it back in, this automatically unlocks. So if you're traveling and you're not doing dishes, you still have to lock this. Or, or crank up your generator or anything that powers up this rig. Uh, a generator will not run a di this dishwasher. No. So, so you won't have to worry about locking it again. Uh, if you've got a generator and you've got a dishwasher like this, what's gonna happen is if you're on generator power, this is gonna sense a, uh, a non-pure power and it's gonna start beeping. And to get it to quit beeping, you just lock it and it'll stop beeping. You can't use it, but at least it'll quit beeping. So you don't recommend, or you just shouldn't, use your dishwasher on on any generator? It won't work. Okay. It won't even come on. All it'll do is lock and stop beeping. <laughs> All right. All right. All right, next will be the range top, hook top. Uh, this one's a little nicer than the ones I've seen before because uh, I like this feature right here. Uh, that uh, I don't know if you guys remember the old crank, snappy crank thing. No more of that. This this works really good. And that's basically how you run them. Turn them all on low. Oh, and this is pretty easy stuff here. I like those grates too. Yeah. It's really, really nice. Uh, they say don't press the lid down until this has like five to ten minutes to cool. Oh, this I thought it was crack. twenty or thirty. Well, I mean, there is a time. Period. I usually tell people thirty to forty-five minutes. Well, just let it cool yeah. off real good. We've seen some cracked corian in the past and some traded in rigs, and that's what happened. They just put that down yeah. before you were cooled off. Forty-five minutes. Yeah, thirty to forty-five is what I usually tell people. All right, so. guys. Forty-five. Forty-five. All right, that's all I we love got, man. Great. I'm going to show you a little bit about the microwave convection oven. I'm going to come on in here. Uh, first thing you need to do is like set, set the time. That's the first question it's going to ask you. This on screen display is very helpful. That's what is like 130 or something. So you just press in 130. And then it's going to ask you if you want it to be AM or PM. Press select. Okay, well, I think one is a.m. And, and we're in p.m. So, okay, so the time is set. It defaults to microwave. So, make sure we got everything in there. Okay, the glass is in, the racks are out. It defaults to microwave. So, if I want to, like, cook a bag of popcorn or something like that, I just put the time in and I hit start, and it that's microwave. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, cancels here. If I want to convection bake, I always just do it manually. This does a lot of, I guess, a lot of features, but convection bake. I always just go over here to, to uh, yeah, manual. And then uh, it reminds you to put the racks in, get the glass out. You'll set your temperature. So your, I think cookies are 350. <laughs> okay. And then you could also set a time. And what we talked about, about 11 minutes for cookies, and then you hit start. And that's basically how you microwave and convection bake with this oven. Everything else is uh, fancy features, I guess. You're going to have to read the instructions. And th yeah, there will be instructions. Is there still like a cheat sheet to this like there used to be in a cookbook, or do we not have that with this uh, new microwave? I'd have to look through the material. Okay. I don't think there is. Okay, we'll talk a little bit about the TV. Now, TVs are just almost endless conversations, and so we'll touch on the main stuff. <laughs> uh, we've got the TV remote here. We've got the AV system, which is this remote here. And the Blu-ray disc player, which is here, remote here. We'll start off with the TV. We're going to hit the power button. Turn on the TV. And we're on antenna right now, okay? And so this is gonna be the antenna control. Top left button turns on the antenna booster, okay? So we're just picking up the free TV that's in the digital airways, okay? You can rotate the antenna like this or this way. Now this is automatic, so you, don't, you shouldn't ever have to rotate the antenna. You just turn it on and it's, it, it tunes in itself. But if you wanna mess with it, you can rotate it. Uh, you can saw I had seven right there, mm -hmm. now I've got six. Mm -hmm. uh, it usually chooses about the best signal that's out there. This is a power meter. Okay, so seven, the higher the number, the better the signal. Okay. okay. What, what is the highest number? I've never seen it over seven. Okay, but we are in western Oklahoma, yeah, so right. <laughs> we're not in like downtown metropolitan area. Okay, so that this is your free TV that you get off the digital airways. No more crank up antennas. This is a little dome. It's about that tall, and you don't have to lower it or nothing. Okay, so let's say, and that's how you watch free TV. So say you go to a park, they got cable, and there's an outlet outside where you hook the cable up. All you got to do in here is just turn this off, and that okay. switches it to the cable mode. Okay. And you'll do the same way that you do uh, the antenna. Is you'll take your remote, you'll go to menu, and then you'll go down to broadcasting, auto program, and hit start, and it'll program all the stations, whether you're on antenna or cable. But we've done, we've already done this. So we're gonna hit cancel. That's your, I don't have a satellite receiver in here. I'd, I'd go through a little bit of that. That's where it can become endless is when you have a satellite receiver. Sometimes they're difficult to get going. But we're gonna move on to the AV system. You turn this AV system on here and to watch what the TV's watching, you'll go to TV mode. Now, your volume. With Green Bay and Washington coming up as we're watching this field goal, I think we all react there. to this. Yeah, I had her up. Uh, whatever the TV is viewing or showing, that's uh, in TV mode. That's what you're going to hear at the surround speakers. You can also choose. Uh, there's a port for CD player on the back. There, there's no CD player here. Uh, it does have an FM tuner. You can listen to the radio. AM tuner. This radio. USB. Is, there's a little port right here. You can plug your uh, take your charger off your cell phone charger. Plug in here and listen to your music uh, off the surround speakers. Uh, Bluetooth, you can actually pair your phone to the Bluetooth. I've already paired it to my phone. I was listening to some music in there earlier. And so that's wireless. Blu-ray disc or DVD, here's what you would need to do for that. You'll take your remote, turn on the DVD player, and then you hit eject, top left button. It'll open up. And you'll put a CD in there, all right, DVD. Your TV will have to be on source DV or HDMI. Okay. And what should be displayed here is the DVD 
display. And so that's what it is. All right. If we had a disc, that it would start playing. The next one is game. There's ports behind the player for games. You can, and then this is a satellite cable TV uh, setting. This is how you'll watch your satellite TV. And there's a port back there. It's an HDMI port. And that's where you plug your satellite in. Video, there's some old-fashioned RCA video ports back there. If I got one of those, a VCR or something, you set that up. Then we're back to TV. Uh, how do you choose A, B, or A, or B, or A, B speakers? To For the bedroom? Yes, for the bedroom. To choose A, B, or A, B speakers, you'll take your remote, look at Amp Menu, okay? Now look at the, the screen. Okay. Auto Cal, I'm still on Amp Menu. I'll arrow down to speaker. Choose that. Okay. Speaker pattern. I'll choose that. Three slash four point one. That's everything. Okay. okay. Bedroom and all. We're gonna arrow down eight times or until you hear this box click. Sleep three slash two point one is just the living room. Okay. So that's how you'll turn the bedroom speakers off. Right. Most folks like that, so I'm just going to leave that off. Yeah, you don't want to hear somebody's TV when you're right. trying to sleep. Yeah, if you guys want that back on, just arrow it back up eight times and uh, turns on the bedroom speakers. Okay. Do you want to touch on any of this over here? Uh, your satellite connections are right here. Everything's labeled. Everything's labeled. You're looking, if you got a roof mounted antenna, you'll look for the black one. It'll say roof one, and that's what you'll hook to. Uh, HDMI to the surround system. This box here is is uh, goes from the satellite to the bedroom, and if you get an outdoor TV, this is how you'll feed those devices. This right here device is the infrared booster or transmitter. What it does is it takes signals from this blue little thing right here. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're doing here, it'll trans go through there and it'll transmit it to here. Okay. okay so that's that's the box for that uh, up there on the top left that's a direct TV uh, voltage inserter okay. so you guys with the swim antennas you got to have one of those and that's pretty much the quick rundown of it I'll explain more in an actual walkthrough. or an actual walkthrough you know when we have devices hooked up Good deal. thank you yeah all right, guys, here's the fireplace that they're putting in there now. And I like this one here. It's got a remote control. You can do heat. You can do visual. You just turn it on. Start by turning it on. And if you look at the display, mm -hmm. you can see the little wavy line, the little red wavy lines. That actually tells you if the heat's on or not. So I'm turning it on and off, just like this. Okay. The other number there is going to be temperature. Okay, 32 would be the hottest. And I believe 20, this is in Celsius, and there's no way to change that. Uh, and so I believe 23 or so is uh, 72 degrees if you convert it to Fahrenheit. Also, you can throw a timer on it with a little air glass, and it goes up to eight, eight hours. And that means it'll run for eight hours and then kick off. And then you can also turn the flames off if you just want heat, no flames. That actually is working through your your deal up there. I know. It's just yeah, a, it's just that. an infrared remote. All right. Okay, so just go through the remote. This you can turn the flames on or off, heater on and off, adjust the heater temp. Uh, what's this little? Oh, this is the uh, just how, it's like artwork is how you like it. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Uh, Illumination. These two, these two bottom ones are just how it looks. Okay. And that's basically the fireplace. Is this fireplace like the ones we had before, where there was like a manual switch and a remote switch, or is it always you can hit a button there or hit a button it's, here? Yeah, it's manual and remote at the same time. Okay, so no extra switch. All right. Okay. Okay. Here's the washer and dryer area. This is a 220 volt Whirlpool set. You just choose your cycle on the washer and uh, hit start and hold it. And she commences to washing for 50 minutes. You got quite a few. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory with the buttons and all. Show where the soap goes. 
pops up, goes in here, softener, bleach. And you'll want to use your HE soaps. Right. And um, in my house, I know I have a front loading washer to keep it from smelling on the inside. You just make sure you leave this door open when you're done with your laundry so the water actually has a way to escape. To dry. Yeah. Is there any... Um, See what we're talking about? Yeah. That residual water will... Start smelling. Yeah, sure will. <laughs> Is there any like clean out ports or anything in this? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, the old ones had one on the front. All right, let's move over to the dryer. Dryer is even s simpler. You'll just put whatever time you want, turn the power on, hit start. Um, how do you clean the vent in this one? And away she goes. Clean the vent in this particular, this is a 220 model. Mm -hmm. Right up here in the front. Oh, nice and easy. So, awesome. that's that. Okay, and then winterizing this, you'll kind of go over that in a real walkthrough, like in person. Just we can go over winterizing in, a, in another video. All right. Okay, this one has a macerating toilet, kind of different than what we're being used to. Uh, this unit's winterized, so I don't want to push these buttons, right, but you'll press explain. press the one for, you know, small jobs and two for big <laughs> jobs. Uh, and that basically, it fills the tank, uh, the bowl and, and flushes. Yeah, some floor plans have to have this um, toilet. There's no way getting around that. But does this one use more water than the others? Yes, it does. Okay, Quite so you'll want to watch your holding tanks and stuff. Is there any other special whatever to that toilet or is that it? Uh, before you travel, you like to evacuate the water, and so you just press both these at the same time, and it'll pump the water out. That okay. way it's not sloshing around and, you know, during travel. Yeah, and then you want to put your lid down, because that'll tear up your wall when yep. you travel. That's about it on the toilet. Okay, this rig has a sleep number bed, and here's the remote for it. If you're laying in bed, and you're over there on the left side, you're, you're left. And so you can adjust your comfort, you know, how firm the mattress is. And you do these one at a time. As far as I know, you can't do them both at the same time. Yeah, if you just immediately hit right and do something else, your left will never complete. It'll still be at 100. Right. So. And so you just choose your side, choose your number, and, uh, and then, it's that easy. Uh, one th another thing to remember is like during travel with the... Uh, um, air pressures like going to Colorado from here you don't want to travel with it at 100 from what I hear because yeah. some places are gain pressure and then you'll you'll pop your